Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, praise God, praise God, praise God. Once again, this is God bless you. This is Pastor Sesame. Amen. Glory to God. Senior Pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. Amen. Glory to God. And we just want to thank you. Amen. For welcoming. Um, I want to thank you for welcoming me into your home. Amen. For another round of Bible study. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Bethesda Revival Center. We're located in the city of Riverside. Amen. Glory to God. And that's in Southern California. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tonight. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to be dealing with, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, amen, salvation, amen, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen, and we're going to attempt to attack the fact that they are, in fact, two separate experiences. What we would ask you to do, amen, is to open your Bibles this evening to the book of Acts, amen, chapter 8. We're going to be spending some time in the book of Acts, chapter 8. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, before we go there, let's let's pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to share the word of the kingdom with these, your beloved people, Father God. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your power. I thank you for the ability by faith that you give me, or God, that you place within me, Father God, and upon me, Father God, to teach and to preach your holy word. I thank you for good success in this endeavor. I come against the enemy on every hand. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Every foe to faith, anything that will try to hinder this broadcast from coming forth, we rebuke and we cast you out of here in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit's power and the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, which makes us successful in this endeavor. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bibles, amen. Uh, the one place we want to go to, first of all, amen. I know I said Acts chapter 8, amen. But uh, we would ask you, amen, glory to God, to read this. We're going to read this one scripture. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 <clears throat> and verse 1. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 1. It says, Paul's writing, he says, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Amen. So tonight we're going to uh, utilize that particular principle. Amen. That uh, the two or three witness principle to establish as fact what the word of God says about salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit being, amen, two separate Amen. Uh, experiences. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you if you have your Bible, we're in Acts chapter eight. Amen. Glory to God. And we would start reading at verse number five. It says, "Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake." hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies or paralysis, and that were lame were healed. Amen. And there was great joy in that city. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to continue to read. I'm, I may as well. Amen. Glory to God. In that city. Uh, verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip 
and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then lay they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Now, <clears throat> what we're dealing with is the ministry of Philip in Samaria. Amen. And it's going to become, shortly it's going to become very evident that salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, based on the word of God, is two separate, there are two separate experiences. Now, Philip, according to Acts chapter 21 and verse 8, I'll read it for you. Uh, let me read from verse 7 of Acts chapter 21. It says, and when they, excuse me, and when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Ptolemais and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea and entered into, listen to this, the house of Philip, the evangelist, which was one of the seven and abode with him. Amen. They went into Philip's house. He was the evangelist. Amen. Which was one of the seven. We're going to look at that in a second to understand what, what, what one of the seven meant. Amen. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Amen. So now we understand that Philip was an evangelist. This same Philip that we're reading about in Acts chapter eight. He's an evangelist, but it also says he was one of the seven and it also tells us he had four daughters that were virgins that did prophesy. Now, what did one of the seven mean? Let's look at that. Let's go over to, let's back up from Acts chapter 8 and go to Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6 and verse 1. Amen. And in those days when the multitude, excuse me, I'm sorry. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily, in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Par Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Amen. And the word of God increased in the number of the disciples, multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Amen. So when it says that Philip the evangelist was one of the seven what it shows us is he was uh, what we call the one of the original deacons also. Hmm. So a deacon can preach. He was a deacon. Amen. He was one. He was chosen early on in the church. Amen. Glory to God. One of the seven that was the, the, to uh, to ensure that proper distribution was meted out. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But also later on in the book of Acts, he's given the title of an evangelist as in Acts chapter 21, verse 8. Amen. Now, we have to understand Philip had a marvelous ministry. He had a powerful 
ministry, amen, even though he was a deacon and an evangelist, amen. And I know oftentimes in our church settings, we do not, uh, we, we separate the two. The deacon has a function, the evangelist or the preacher has a function. But uh, I remember when I was a deacon, amen, I preached, amen. I would do the work of an evangelist. I would go out as a deacon. I would go out to the soup kitchens and to the, uh, the homeless shelter, the mission, and I would preach the gospel of the kingdom. I would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. I would minister the word of salvation. People would, the gospel, people would get saved. Amen. People would get job. You know, I would allow the Lord to use me. Amen. Glory to God. And so he had a marvelous ministry, he had a powerful ministry. In verse, uh, amen, glory to God, 7 and 8 lets us know some more details. As in Acts chapter 8, it says, For unclean spirits crying with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that taken with palsies or that were paralyzed and that were lame, they got healed. And there was great joy in the city. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So miracles were constantly being manifested in Philip's ministry. Amen. P and people were being saved. Amen. Remember, we're dealing with the fact that salvation and the baptism of the Holy Ghost are two separate. Amen. Events. Amen. Glory to God. So folks was getting saved. Amen. Under Philip's ministry and people were being Amen. Healed and, mi and miracles was jumping off. Amen. In his ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. He was casting devils out. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But I want you to notice, amen, by what we read about and so far about Philip's ministry, that uh, not one person, it's mentioned that not one person uh, actually received the baptism or the infilling of the Holy Ghost under Philip's ministry. Amen. Glory to God. But we see that folks was getting saved and people was getting healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, as we keep reading, amen, glory to God, we'll find that the Bible says that when the apostles at Jerusalem heard about the marvelous things that was happening, amen, through Philip's ministry in Samaria, uh, they sent Peter and they sent John to lay hands on those folks in Samaria, amen, glory to God, uh, uh, those new converts in Samaria, so they might that they might receive the Holy Ghost, amen, glory to God. And we're going to also see, we should also note, amen, glory to God, that according to verse 17 in Acts chapter 8, it says, when John and Peter laid hands on them, it says, then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost, amen, glory to God. And so, uh, the, the Bible shows us, amen, that, that, that those that they laid hands on, none of them failed to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, so what I'm trying, so what we're showing you, amen, remember out of the, 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 the testimony of two to three witnesses, two or three witnesses, every word of God is established. All right. Glory to God. And so what we're showing you, what we just showed you is one witness where Philip preached to these Samaritans. They received salvation. Amen. And then Peter and John came once they heard that these Samaritans, amen, glory to God, had received the word of the Lord. They, Peter and John went there, prayed for them, laid hands on them so they could receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. So now let's look at this scripture again. And, and and get do some, look at some some conclusive, amen evidence that these amen Samaritans were in fact amen uh, born again under amen Philip's ministry, amen. Glory to God, Hallelujah! And the fact that receiving the Holy Spirit, amen, and uh, glory to God, uh, the, I'm talking about baptism of the Holy Ghost and being saved or being converted, amen. Glory to God are two separate events, amen. We have to understand the Great Commission according to Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. We're supposed to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And the Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. Glory to God. So let's look back at Acts chapter 8. I told you we're going to spend some time there. Amen. Glory to God. And I said that every truth is established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So we're going to look at this again. Amen. Acts chapter 8 verse 5 says, Then, P then Philip went down to the city of Samaria 
and preached Christ unto them. Amen. Glory to God. He preached Christ unto them. What is preaching Christ unto somebody? It is preaching the good news of the gospel of salvation that is made available through our faith in Christ Jesus. Now, so preaching Christ is in fact oh, the our obeying the great commission to do so. Amen. That's the commission he gave the church to preach Christ. Amen. Now, the Samaritans, they believed the gospel uh, message that Philip preached. Amen. How do we know? Because in verse 6, it says, And the people with one accord. What people? The people that Philip preached to in the city of Samaria. The people with one accord did what? They gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. In other words, Philip, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, allowed the God to use him to a degree that to to such a degree that he proved ir, un, uncontrovertible, incontrovertible evidence that Jesus was alive and well. Amen. Because it says they gave heed. Amen. What does it mean to give heed? It means to believe. It means to receive. When you heed someone's word, you obey. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pay attention. Amen. Glory to God. So it says he pay, gave, they gave heed unto those things which he spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Amen. So he just wasn't a talker. Amen. He demonstrated the power of God. The fact that Jesus was in fact alive. But the, the key thing is the Bible says they gave heed unto those things which he spake. Amen. So according to, amen, Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, he that believeth, if they gave heed, they believed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's the first proof. Another proof is this here. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1 and 23 that we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abide, abideth forever. Amen. So now back to uh, uh, chapter eight of, book of, of the book of Acts. It tells us in verse 14, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had what? Received the word of God. Remember, we're born again by the, not of corruptible seed, but, by of, but of incorruptible by the word of God. So they received the word of God in verse 14 of the book of Acts uh, at chapter eight. They received the word of God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when we understand that they received the word of God, that is the same thing as they believed the word of God. Come on. They received. And who is the word? Jesus is the word. Come on. So they received Jesus. They that That's our second witness. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at a third witness. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Acts chapter, amen. Glory to God. Uh, uh, 14, it says, amen. Glory to God. They, they, they Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard the, that they had received the word, uh, 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 the word of God, they sent unto Peter and John, who when they would come down, pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we need to understand, glory to God, they received the word of God. They received it. Amen. Glory to God. And so glory to God. So we understand that this word received is letting us know, glory to God, that they in fact believed. Amen. And got saved. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see, we can see very clearly that the Samaritans got saved under Philip's ministry. Amen. Glory to God. They had received the word of God. Amen. Concerning salvation. But the Bible says that they had not yet been baptized. In verse 16, it says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, so listen to this here. So we understand so far that these Samaritans, at, or these in Samaria, excuse me, had, having, they're not Samaritans, they're in Samaria. Okay, I want to clarify that. I keep saying Samaritan, but they're in Samaria. 
Okay, the Samaritan, the Jews in Samaria, when they had received this word, glory to Jesus' name, they were born again. Remember, we're teaching you tonight that being born again and the baptism of the Holy Ghost are two separate events. Amen. Glory to God. Now, I may not have the opportunity or the time to finish all of this, but we'll pick this up next week. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. So let's look at this again. Glory to God. It says in verse 16, it's, I'm going to start from verse 14 again. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God. How did they receive the word of God? Philip was in Samaria preaching the gospel. So Samaria received the word of God. Folks in Samaria got saved. People in Samaria were born again. Okay. So they received the word of God. So they sent, so the apostles said, we need to send Peter and John out there. Why? Because the, you'll see these folks needed the Holy Ghost. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them. Prayed for who? The Samaria, those who had received Christ. They prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Why? In verse 16, answered that question. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of of the Lord Jesus. Okay, they only had received water baptism and they were saved. Amen. I mean, they had received Christ. Verse 17, then lay they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Now, uh, how do we know? I don't want to get ahead of myself, but amen. Glory to God. We know that they received it because in verse 18, it says, when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. There had to be something that Simon, who was once this sorcerer, saw, all right? He saw, he, he, there was something obvious, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to Jesus' name. And he, and he wanted, he said, he said, give me this power also that on whosoever I lay hands may receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. So he saw something, something was obvious. And we're going to teach later that what was obvious was they received the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And now somebody might ask, why did Peter and John had to go and pray for the Samaritans? Amen. To receive the Holy Ghost. Well, why couldn't Peter? Well, you know, some so for some of us individuals, God has a different plan for us. Amen. It's obvious that, that Philip had, amen, an anointing for folk to get saved. Peter and John was functioning under an anointing for folk when they lay hands on folks, for folks to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There was nothing wrong or, or deficient in Philip's ministry. He had a mighty ministry, but it was God's plan to send Peter and John to lay hands on the new converts so they could receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, uh, uh, we're, we're getting ready. Let's go to, let's go deeper. Amen. Glory to God. I'm trying to measure out my time and everything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Peter and John, on the other hand, they had a ministry more on the line of bringing believers into the baptism of of the Holy Ghost, amen. When they laid hands on these Samaritans, amen, glory to God. These new converts received the Holy Ghost. Let's look at Acts chapter eight, once again, verse 17. We just read that, I'll read it again. Then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, give me also this power that on whosoever I lay hand, he may receive the Holy Ghost, amen. Once again, Simon saw something. Simon saw that through the laying on of hands by the apostles that the Holy Ghost was given. What did Simon see? Amen. He had to see something. Amen. What did he see? Now, somebody might say, well, they, they saw joy. No, the folks, there was joy in Samaria. Amen. Glory to God. When folks start, when folks was born again, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We read that. Amen. Praise God. Where was that at? Amen. Philip went down to the menu preaching. There was there in verse eight. Amen. In verse eight. After they after and with Philip's uh, preaching. Amen. Glory to God. In Acts chapter eight, verse eight, joy 
was they, they saw joy. There was great joy in the city. So joy was not the sign of the Holy Ghost. It was tongues. We're going to go deeper into that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, uh, therefore, the Samaritan, Samaritans, they already had great joy. Amen. So that couldn't have been a sign, amen, that prompted, amen, Simon to want the gift of the laying on of hands so folk could receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So let's look at uh, uh, Paul, uh, or who is Saul. Let's look at Saul's conversion. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. Amen. Glory to Jesus' name. Praise God. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to letters to Damascus to the synagogues that he found that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said. Who art thou, Lord? Question. Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to, prick against, to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed, the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Amen. Glory to God. So we understand, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That Saul is now converted. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to go deeper into that. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I believe, let me see if I got enough time to do this this week. Amen. I'm going to do the best I can. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, the chapter nine, amen, of Acts, it records, amen, actually, uh, Saul, who is Paul, it, it, it records his, amen, baptism in the Holy Ghost. And it also shows that receiving salvation and baptism of the Holy Ghost are two separate experiences. Amen. Glory to God. Now, let's keep reading. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus. I'm at chapter 9 of Acts, verse 10, uh, named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And has seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And amen. Glory to God. So Saul has seen this vision of Ananias coming and God is confirming that to Ananias. Amen. Then Ananias answers, Lord, I've heard of many of this by many of this man, how much evil he has done. Yes, Saul did evil. He was persecuting the church. Amen. Praise God. And here he hath authority from chief priests uh, to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a what? A chosen vessel unto me to bear my name mm -hmm, before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For he will show unto him, for I will show unto him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then in verse 17, and Ananias went his way. And entered into the house, amen, glory to God, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared to thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith arose and was baptized, amen. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened, then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we see uh, on the road of to Damascus. Amen. We see that Saul got saved. But then we also see that God spoke to a man named Ananias. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A disciple named Ananias to go and minister to Saul, to lay hands on Saul, that Saul might receive, receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. To be 
filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Ha hallelujah. Glory to God. And we know that Saul was saved because when Ananias addressed Saul, he in verse 17, Ananias called him brother Saul. A a amen. And God had already said, amen, that, a that Saul was a chosen vessel. That's in verse 15. Go that way. He is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God calls uh, Saul a chosen vessel. Amen. Ananias calls him brother Saul. And so we see, amen. Glory to God. That means he's saved. He's already a Christian according to faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so th this is a stretch, but according to Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we see, amen, glory to God, that in verse four of amen or verse five of Acts chapter nine, amen, Saul says this, he says, who art thou Lord? Amen. So praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And then the Lord says, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. So Saul calls him Lord. Amen. And then in verse six, it says, and he trembling and astonished and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Amen. Praise God. So he's calling him Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So Saul is calling Jesus Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So now, uh, even though Saul had received Jesus as his Lord, Saul was not yet baptized in the Holy Ghost. Remember what we're trying to establish tonight, what we endeavored to establish. I'm going to quit saying trying. What we endeavored to establish is that being born again and being baptized in the Holy Ghost are two separate events. Praise God. They can come close to one another, but they're still two separate events events. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we, so, uh, the, in, uh, Acts chapter 11, let's do this. Amen. Acts chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. Verse Thirteen, And he showed us how he had seen, talking about Cornelius, had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, stand, I mean, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. Are you with me? A amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Let me, let me back up. This, I got to deal with this. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. In, in verse 11, uh, cha Acts chapter 11 and verse... Do, 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 do. Verse 1. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Amen. Saying, thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them. We dealt with circumcised and uncircumcised last week. Circumcised meant Jewish, uncircumcised meant Gentiles. But Peter rehearsed the matter. In other words, he explained himself from the beginning and expounded it by order. He says, I was in the city of Joppa praying in a trance. I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners and it came even to me, upon the which when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, and creeping things and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying in me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. Amen. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times. And all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. 
And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and thy house shall be saved. Amen. And in Peter's, uh, really, he's testifying. He's saying, and as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on, on them as on us at the beginning. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need you to understand in, in accordance to what Peter's account is, his testimony. These Gentiles receive salvation and the baptism of the Holy Ghost almost at the same time. Almost at the same time. It was pretty much simultaneously, but there's still separate events. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, and I need you to understand that nobody in Cornelius' household failed to receive the Holy Ghost. That's what Peter's testifying to. And I need you to notice in this particular case, nobody laid hands on them. So, so this is a learning experience. Sometimes you can lay hands on people, amen, and they can receive and they will speak in tongues. Other times, and I've seen this, you can be preaching the gospel of the kingdom Folks will be saved. Folks will receive Christ. Amen. Glory to God. And I must have to, I have to interject this. Oftentimes is the best time for somebody to receive the Holy Spirit. It's very soon after they've received Christ as their savior. Amen. Because their heart is wide open. They're ready. They're positioned. They're postured. Amen. To receive. They're already in a face of the faith. Excuse me. The, the place of faith. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And they can receive. So he's preaching to them and the Holy Ghost just falls on them. And they spoke in tongues. He said, because they, he says, it's as if the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. What was at the beginning? They spake in tongues. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So they all received the Holy Ghost at the same time that one person uh, failed to speak. Amen. See, and uh, actually the speaking in tongues is what convinced the people, uh, Peter and the people that was with Peter, that these uh, folks, these Gentiles had received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Okay. Amen. Glory to God. We give God the praise for that. Amen. Let's, let's back up. Let's get some more clarity. Perhaps I jumped ahead of myself. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at Acts chapter uh, uh, 10. Amen. Let's back up one chapter from 11 to 10. 10. It says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Amen. Then answered Peter, can any man for forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then pray they him to tarry certain days. Remember, they weren't tarrying for the Holy Ghost. They asked him after they received the Holy Ghost, glory to God. And after they were baptized in Jesus name, they asked Peter and them to hang around and teach them some more. That's what the word tarry was meant. All right. Glory to Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let, let's uh, go to Acts chapter 19. Come, come on with me. Acts chapter 19. Glory to God. Verse one. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, listen to this. Have ye received the Holy Ghost? Since ye believed, and they said unto him, unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Pause for a minute. Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? So, point number one, it's obvious that they had believed. So they were saved. They had received Christ. They were born again. But he says, 
have you received the Holy Ghost? Remember, I'm teaching that salvation or being born again is a separate and distinct event. Okay, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a separate and distinct event from being born again. Amen, glory to God. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they say, we have not even heard so much as the, whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Watch this. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Amen. And all the men were about 12. Bless God. So now, this is dealing with these Ephesian disciples. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. These the Ephesian dis disciples, they were also Gentiles. They had all been, all been followers of John the Baptist, but they had not heard that Jesus had already come. Amen. Glory to God. And therefore, they had never been saved and baptized. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Amen. they have been baptized in accordance to John's baptism. Amen. Glory to God. See, we, we've got to see this. News didn't travel uh, then as fast as it travels today. Amen. For example, today we can look on the, on the news and we can see what's going on in Afghanistan. It's sad, of course, but we can see what's going on in Afghanistan. News travels fast. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, in the last days, folks going to run to and fro and knowledge is going to be increased. Right now we have the World Wide Web. We can even use our cell phones and we can look at the news in any place on this planet. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. So news didn't travel as fast as it did, uh, as it does now back then. Amen. Everything was slow. So you could have lived an entire lifetime and not known something had occurred. Amen. So these folks had, they had heard John the Baptist preach and tell that Jesus was coming, but they had not realized that, that, that he had, amen, glory to God, and that their sins, amen, glory to God, could be washed away. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They didn't know. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. So, 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 so let me, let's keep going here. So what we see here, glory to God, is that, that, uh, Paul is telling them that Jesus, who is this promised Messiah, he has already come. He's already died. He's already rose from the dead. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. And he, Paul's explaining to the, these uh, believers in Ephesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That if they would, they, they, they could be saved. They could receive Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now we understand that they, they get saved. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Amen. They receive Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Huh? Because he's teaching them. It says, then, then said Paul, John verily baptized the baptism of repentance unto the, the people that they should believe on him that which shall come after him that is on Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. And so what we see, glory to God, they now they're, they're baptized and you don't get baptized unless you, you all right then. You're supposed to get baptized when you're saved. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then Paul lays his hands on them and they receive the Holy Ghost and they speak in tongues. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, so, uh, Paul laid in this case, Paul lays his hands on these Ephesian believers. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, uh, in my closing, amen. I know that was a lot to swallow, but I was just trying, I'm just trying to lay it down. Amen. Glory to God. That the baptism of the Holy Ghost and being born again are two separate, amen, uh, events. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And we give God the praise for that. Amen. Hopefully, amen. I know I was talking fast. Praise God. Had a lot to cover. Praise God. We're going to go deeper in this. Amen. Glory to God. You know, I, I, let me flow for about 10 minutes. What, I, what I'm doing, I mean, I know some of y'all saying, well, pastor, what you're teaching is elementary. Well, today, as I was meditating, the Holy Spirit showed me that there's many Christians, some even in our church, in our ministry, under my pastor, under, under my pastorship, that we know a lot of detail. We know a lot of deep stuff. 
we know some deep stuff. We've gotten out, I'll say it this way, we've gotten out into deep water. But we're having difficulty swimming in that deep water. We're having difficulty keeping our heads above that water. Amen. And so I believe what the Lord is showing me to do is to back up and bring you back from the deep water, back a little bit into waters where you can wade through and then take you out into the deep water. You see, oftentimes we know certain things, but the principle behind the thing has not yet worked itself into our life. Amen. It's just like the Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. In other words, it's foundational. And it says, without thy getting, get understanding. Well, oftentimes we find ourselves doing things, saying things, and be, you know what I'm saying? And we don't quite understand why. See, God wants to take us uh, to a place to where we're not merely technicians, where we follow directions. He wants us to be faith engineers to where we know why. We, we, know, we, have, we know why we're doing something. We know why we're saying something. And there's an expectation of what's supposed to transpire or manifest, amen, by certain actions or by, certain, or, or, or by having a certain, a certain faith, amen, or belief system, amen, glory to God. And though, though, so now, church, Bethesda, friends of our ministry, if you would just bear with me and let me lay these, 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 these principal foundations for you. Amen, glory to God. Let me just give me the opportunity to lay them foundation. Follow with me. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. And you will find. Amen. See, be, he, he, oh, yeah, that they both shot. So, so what the Lord is showing us is it's time, amen, that for out for just sitting in the church and ingesting, ingesting, ingesting. You're supposed to put what you're being taught to use. I can honestly say that I grew exponentially, amen, in my walk with Christ because I was under ministries that encouraged us to go into the hedges and the highways and to compel men. Something has happened as of late in the church. We tend to want to be entertained. We want to hear a new thing. We want to hear something that tickles our fancy. We want to hear something that tickles our ears. We want to hear a new thing. Amen. But the Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. And believe it or not, you and I have a responsibility to work this ministry. I have a responsibility to help to teach you. The Bible says I'm called for the perfecting of the saints. I'm one of the fivefold ministry gifts to you. Amen. Teaching you, pouring into you so that you can reach your community, so that you can bring folks to church. Amen. So you can bring people to Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was dealing with one of my neighbors today. Amen. Uh, just sharing with her. Amen. Glory to God. And she invited me to speak once again at a, a playground, at a park. Amen. Uh, I believe it's on September the 14th or September 11th, or September, some, sometime in September. It might, might be September 8th. It's the second Saturday in September. And I don't mind. Amen. It's it, 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 whether it's under a tree or beside a bush. Amen. I'll go and preach, and so and and teach the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. I have. You know what I'm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when people when people are hungry like that, they want to hear the truth. Amen. Glory to God. They want to hear the truth. They want they want answers. Amen. To their questions. Amen. They want they want they want to see the power of God. And oftentimes, glory to God, we need to get back to the basics. Amen. The basics, the basics, the, the basics of the thing of the church is 
the church came into existence not through talking, but it was through the power or the manifested power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. God, I've done what I could do, amen, to illustrate, to demonstrate, amen, with showing more than one witness in the Bible where individuals were saved or born again and subsequent to their born again experience, they then received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Father, I pray that this lesson that I brought forth is received in the name of Jesus Christ. For, for I understand, Father, where there is no reception, there can be no conception. Father, we want them, We are, my desire is that they will conceive in their hearts, amen, by faith, amen, this reality, amen, that being born again is a, and, and being baptized in the Holy Ghost is a separate event from being born again and that they would desire that they will open up their hearts to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. I break the devil's power over people's minds now in the precious name of Jesus. Every falsehood, every myth, every fairy tale that's been told we break the we break its power off your life that you would be believe the truth as illustrated and as proven in the word of god and i thank you father right now father perhaps there's somebody so perhaps there's somebody out here amen that's listening that's hearing the sound of my voice that happened to be turning into youtube or facebook that's never received christ as their savior a amen somebody let me let me read something for you amen glory to god amen that's very very important amen glory to god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus you know the most important decision that you're going to make in your life is to receiving christ it's the decision that's going to determine where you're going to spend eternity amen you're, where you're going to spend eternity whether it's in heaven or whether it's in hell. Now, you may ask me, well, pastor, you've been talking about born again. You've been talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I've never even been born again. Well, you can be born again today. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 8, it says, What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. So that tells us that our mouth must say something. Amen. What must it say? Our mouth must confess the Lord Jesus. And, and it says, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Then verse 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So now, based on the word of God, if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you believe that, Next, you must confess that, amen, that Jesus is Lord, amen, glory to God, and you confess it with your mouth. I receive you, Jesus Christ, as my Savior. I believe your death on the cross. The blood that you shed say, uh, was shed for my sins, to remove my sins, amen, glory to God, to cleanse me of all sin. I believe that you, Christ rose from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive Christ now in my life. I thank God. I confess him as my Lord. I confess him as my Savior. And I thank God 
for saving me today. Okay, very simple. Now I want you. I'm gonna. Now I've, I prayed that mighty fa kind of fast. Now I want you to repeat it after me, Father, in Jesus' name. I come to you. I ask the Lord to save me. I ask forgiveness of all my sins. I confess Jesus as my Lord. I confess him as my Savior. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he rose from the dead. I confess him now as my Savior. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, beloved, that's all I have today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We're going to continue our teaching. Praise the Lord. On the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to just, deal, just bear with me. Let me bring you back to some... You know, some water that you can wade in, water to the ankles. Then we're going to get to water to the knees. We're going to get the water to the loins. And then we're going to get to some water we can swim in. Praise God. We're going to dance in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I say God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Want to remind you, amen, that tomorrow, amen, praise God, by 12 noon, we will be having, amen, our corporate intercessory prayer. There's much to be prayed for. There's things going on in Afghanistan and Haiti, Florida and Texas, glory to God, California, Oregon. We need to be praying. There's stuff happening all over the world. We need to be praying. We got to pray. So we'll be having prayer via Zoom teleconference. Those that have prayer requests, we need you to get them into us. Praise God. Amen. So we can, uh, amen, uh, pray for, for you. Amen. And for your needs. Amen. We've been praying for folks that's been catching COVID. Amen. Folks, some people, cancers, we've been getting healed. Think people have been getting blessed with jobs and everything. Amen. Praise God. So we need to be praying. Remember on Thursday, we will be distributing food. Praise God. Hallelujah. And on Friday, we're going to return at 7 p.m. Amen. To our Zoom teleconference prayer. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is Pastor Sessom letting you know we love you. We miss you. And then we cannot wait to see you face to face. Amen. So when we get ready to dismiss, amen, this is what we say. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the church say, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.